My dad used to say stories are like pennies. Each one has two sides. The side that makes you think The side that makes you feel. That's tails in this metaphor, by the way. Some people will tell you those two things don't fit together. But sometimes, opposites attract. exterior, but inside an intricate and complex beauty. Wow. Then again, opposites are opposite, too. Just once, I thought I could count on you to be civilized. <laughs> this isn't working. The data proves it. <laughs> So you end up with a heady story that lacks heart. Or a story full of emotion that just feels like you've seen it before. But in the end, to be their best, they need each other. It isn't easy. Honey. But if my parents manage to work it out. It's time. Maybe we can too. Speaking of cavemen, the oldest known example of cave art is believed to be about 35,400 years old. It's a stick figure of a babarusa, a very unattractive animal also known as a deer pig, except when it's known as a pig deer. Now that drawing represents what, you, what Smithsonian Magazine called mankind's first ever picture. A scant 34,390 years later, mankind marked another major milestone when Digitas created and hosted what Smithsonian Magazine, if it wrote about those things, would surely call the world's first new front. For those of you who are good at math, yes, that means that this year marks the 10th anniversary of the Digitas new fronts. We're this many. So happy anniversary to us. Now, the new fronts were obviously very deliberately named to stand in contrast to the TV upfronts, and we launched them for a very simple reason. 
to signal to our clients that they weren't paying enough attention to digital. At the time, digital ad spending represented about 10% of total ad spend, and for many brands, it was an afterthought. Today, of course, digital represents 40% of total ad spend and is poised to surpass TV. So if the original mission of the new fronts was to get clients to focus on digital, well, then mission accomplished. And now we want to use the 10-year milestone as an opportunity to set out a fresh challenge for all of us, for all of you, and for our industry. 10 years ago, you were not paying enough attention to digital, and today, you're not paying enough attention to content. Now, don't get me wrong. Content is one of the fastest-growing marketing segments. By one estimate, spending by U.S. companies on content marketing will surpass $300 billion this year. But for too many companies, content remains marketing's neglected stepchild. For them, it's an afterthought, an add-on, or even worse, an experiment. It's poorly defined and disconnected from other marketing activities. And I still can't get through a week without somebody telling me they don't know what content is or whether it works. Some of those criticisms are fair, of course. The word content itself is fairly weak. And I say that as someone who has it in its title. It can be applied to almost anything. It can mean almost anything. It can be come from almost anywhere. There's no clearly defined content industry or benchmarks. But those things are needed, and they're needed now. So we're throwing down a gauntlet with a challenge, a dare, or as the drum noted yesterday in, in reporting on this, a help needed ad. Our goal is to create an industry-wide coalition to bring together brand marketers, publishers, agencies, and content creators, everyone in the ecosystem, to come up with standard definitions and benchmarks to build common currencies that will give marketers the tools and we think, more importantly, the confidence that they need to invest in content at the right levels and to measure the return on that investment against their objectives. Because when content is done right, it represents the best we have to offer as marketers. Stories. The kind that have engaged people for centuries, updated to reflect new technologies and new trends, and to ask new questions. Content doesn't just deliver what we want, it reflects who we are. Cavemen, huddled around the fire, passing stories down through generations. Astronauts, always looking to discover what's next. See what I did there? Now, our event this year was inspired by a quote from the author and academic E.O. Wilson. It should look better than that. That's how it should look. <laughs> we exist in a bizarre combination of Stone Age emotions, medieval beliefs, and godlike technology. That inspired this caveman and astronaut theme, which was the brainchild of two of my favorite creative collaborators, Sarah Bruns and Dave Roth. And I asked Dave to write a manifesto to explain the idea, and these are some of his words. We, as humans, are messed up beings with opposing impulses, caveman and astronaut. Sometimes we forget that, but great storytellers never do. Now, a whole bunch of us media elites may have gotten a little too comfy with our astronaut status. We trusted data to always lead us the right way. We applauded technology we couldn't even pronounce for its power to reinvent the landscape. But on a rainy day in November, we heard from the other side. Wow. And suddenly, we remembered that we're cavemen, too. Impulsive, tribal, driven by passion, sometimes more than reason. Now, despite that seemingly political statement about a rainy day in November, it's important to note that we're actually not here to villainize the caveman and all of us. And we're also not out to knock astronauts down a peg. We're here to celebrate them both. Astronauts deal with what's possible. Cavemen deal with, what, with what's shared. And there's a tension between them, but that's OK, because tension is at the heart of all great stories. Today's program is designed to be our own story about tension and joy, challenges, possibilities, and opportunities in the new age of storytelling. So let's explore what happens there together, and thank you for joining us.